So hello and welcome to today's demo. Um, today we are going to be talking about Microsoft Analytics Without Limits, so Extreme Excel, OLAP, and SQL. My name is Rachel Bedore and I'm a Solutions Engineer for Kyligence. And as many of you may know, um, Kyligence enables a platform that allows you to do analytics without limits. And what we mean by that is a few things. So first of all, we support all data platforms. So whether your data is in a data warehouse, data lake, streaming, or as many of you are doing, uh, moving to cloud, we can support that. And actually, we usually have a variety, um, a mixed match of these things in the data platforms group that we support. The next thing is intelligent pre-computation. This is kind of like our bread and butter. Uh, this is where we are building multi-dimensional cubes and table indexes, which allow you to pre-aggregate the results of your query before you even ask it. And that allows you to have really, really fast query response times. Uh, this is also optimized by our AI assisted query engine. We also offer massive concurrency. That means that you could have thousands of analysts at your company and different organizations querying at once. They don't have to be humans, however. They could also be computers. So you could have a multi-threaded program. And we see this a lot in machine learning. And it could be running thousands of queries at once. Um, and it could be you know, feeding into a machine learning program. We see that a lot also in like the financial industry. And another thing I'm going to be showing you today is our support for all BI tools. So we support all major BI tools. Um, regardless, and uh, we support Excel, Power BI, Tableau, and MicroStrategy. You'll find that at your organization, people can use all of these at once. Um, we're not like limiting you to one or another. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about our architecture so you can kind of get to know like how it works. Sorry. So here um, you can see what we just talked about was any data platform on any cloud. Um, and today I'm gonna to be showing you Azure Cloud and we're gonna be running on Snowflake. So that would be our data platform and we're gonna be using Azure Cloud. Um, and on the right, you can see that again, we connect to any BI tool. We play a lot in machine learning and SaaS and CRM type software apps. In the middle, you can kind of see how it works. So you have this pre-computation layer where you're building cubes to aggregate uh, the results of your query. You have the modeling layer, and that's where you're telling your data how it relates to each other. Uh, so you're showing the data how it connects with each other, and that our AI assistive design like also helps with that. We also have the semantic layer. So that's where you create this unified syntax. It's where you can define terms that you can use across your organization. So for example, for finance, you can use terms that will work throughout the organization so that um, it's easier to communicate and our customers really like this. It's like makes it a lot easier for your data engineers to be working the same way as your, you know, end business users. So now I'm going to show you a little bit about the inner workings of the demo I'm about to show you. So what I'm going to be demoing today has a lot to do with our push down engine um, and with our cube building query, aggregate query engine. So this is kind of like how a typical application will work. Um, you will have, most of your queries will go to the cubes that you built. And those cubes are pretty easy to build. Um, so you'll build cubes based on how many, and will our uh, AI engine will help you with that. So it'll be based on how, uh, so most of your queries will hit the cube. For cases that are outside the cube, you might end up hitting the original database. We allow you to do that. And we estimate that it'll only be about two to 3% of your queries will hit the original database. So today I'm gonna to be showing you Snowflake connected to Excel. So Snowflake does not natively support Excel, but you can use Kyligens to get you there. And you can use it with or without cubes. So first I'm gonna show you without a cube. And so what I'll be demoing the first time is this query pushdown we'll be querying on Snowflake, so directly on there. And then I will turn, like enable my cube that I've already built for you, and I will show you what it's like to connect to the cube, or sorry, to query the cube, to hit the cube. So it'll be a lot faster 
Um, so that will be the pre-computation layer. That's the part that I'll be showing you there. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to just show you the Snowflake backend real quick. Um, I just kind of want to let you see it so that you can kind of feel the data. So this is my Snowflake um, data database. Um, it's sales data. It's pretty straightforward. It actually comes from Snowflake. So it's sample data that Snowflake has generated for us. Um, there's a couple different scale factors. Um, I'm actually going to use the 100 times scale factor. Uh, I think it has 600 million lines of data. This is a pretty beefy um, database. And I had connected this already in with Kyogen's cloud. This is running on Azure. So here you can see my information for running on Azure. This is where I set up the Snowflake string. So I actually just typed that in and it all automatically went for me, which is great. <laughs> I'm kind of a Snowflake novice. So that was really nice. It, I didn't really have to do anything. Um, and you also don't really have to do a lot with Azure. So kind of just work through this workspace. So I'm going to enter it, just kind of show you real quick. This is where the data just automatically um, was imported in. So it's actually, it's still on Snowflake, but it's letting you view it so that you can manipulate it within here. Here's the model that I created. So I'm gonna be using this, uh, this scale factor 100. This is the largest one. And this is just where I model the data, so I, where, where I show it how it connects to each other. Um, so this is a really basic star schema. Um, it's just sales data. So uh, you can tell I just like, I actually just use the UI to make joins um, between the different dimensions. So to connect Snowflake to Excel, we're gonna be using our MDX engine. And MDX, for anybody who's not familiar, is Microsoft's query language. It enables you to create more elegant queries um, and it works really well with other Microsoft products. So I've already set that up and I'm gonna go back at the end and show you how that's set up. But let's get to the good stuff now. <laughs> so I'm gonna just set up my system in Excel. So I'm gonna, um, I still do this even though I've done it a bunch. It's really nice we have this tutorial that kind of shows you how to go through it. So I'm gonna open Excel. I'm gonna open a new workbook. Data, get data, data from database from analysis service. And I'm gonna just copy and paste this string right here, which we already set up for you. And I'm just, everything's pretty automatic, so I'm just gonna keep going and just select yes. And you can see it's, now it just has the pivot table with all my data set up. It is really fast and really convenient. Um, and I really like that. Before I start playing with this, I wanna show you Snowflake first. So I wanna show you push, I wanna show you what it's like to push down into the um, data source, which you are more than welcome to do. You can use this product um, even without cubes. You're more than welcome to do that. So I'm gonna start by, I'm actually like, going to disable the cube to show you that. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to disable it. And I'm going to refresh my data source. And I'm just going to start playing around. It's everybody's favorite thing to do in Excel. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to um, re-enable the cube real quick. We'll show the cube first. Um, because I think it just all good. We'll show well one well, showing the cube first. <laughs> That's okay. So um actually this year to date is uh expression I made in MDX. Um so this is this is going to be querying the data in MDX. And yeah, so I actually ended up just doing the cube first to get it started. So this is going pretty fast because we're in the cube. Now I'm going to try to disable that cube again um, to see if I can show you guys push down. I think, not sure why. Go offline, try it again. <laughs> okay, so now we should be pushing down into Snowflake. 
So you can see this is taking a little bit longer because I'm pushing down into Snowflake. Um, and I'm going to show you on the other side what it looks like when that query goes to Snowflake versus going to the cube. Um, so yeah, you get the little circle thing, the blue circle kind of pops up um, just because it's taking a second. It's a pretty big data set. So I've noticed that with the, when we're using cubes, I've built this with, I built this with a scale factor one, a scale factor 10, a scale factor 100. And when you're working with a cube, it, you don't see an increase in latency as much when you have a larger data set. So if you have a larger cube, you're going to still get those like sub second queries. But when you're pushing down to the data source, it will be slower based on how large your data set is. So because this is a large data set, it is going to be a little bit slower on Snowflake. I'm just going to open it up. And we'll go and I'm just going to show you the query history. So this is RDBMS. This means that it's pushing down. Um, and I can actually show you in Snowflake as well what that looks like. Oops, let's pull this down. So if I go to query history, you can see that it's running the query. And this is actually querying on Snowflake. So we're not, all Kyligence is doing is allowing you to connect Snowflake to Excel at this point. But now I'm gonna, I'm gonna re-enable that cube and I'm gonna show you the difference. Line. I'm just gonna let it connect a second. And we'll hit refresh. And yeah, you, you can see a definite increase in speed because I'm now I'm hitting the cube. So um, it's just a little bit easier to work with. Um, and I think like your business analysts will really like that because when they're working on Excel, um, they, they don't want to have to wait for a long time. So it offers a really easy way to speed up your BI tool. I'm just going to show you again what it looks like from us. So now you can see, now I've, these queries have been generated from Excel hitting the model. So they're hitting the cube and it shows you just the difference. Like when we were running on Snowflake, we were running at seven seconds um, in a query. And now when we're running and hitting the cube, we're running on less than one second. So it's moving pretty fast. Um, and yeah, and it's also at this point, it won't be querying down to Snowflake, it's just querying on the cube. So at this point, I'm going to show you a little bit about that MDX layer that we created to connect to Excel. Um, I just want to show you some of the cool features. I'm going to go in here, and I already built this, but I'm just going to step through it with you. So this is our MDX layer, and this is where we can create, like, earlier when I was talking about unified semantic layer, we can do some of that in here, um, and I'll show you so that we can create terms that we share across our organization. This is where we just pull in the model. So I have this scale factor 100 model. And this is where we define semantics. So here um, is where, for example, you can have, I did this, so this is month. And it is pulling from a dimension column called ship underscore month name, sorry, underscore month. But I also have one called month name. So when my value column, column might be like, you know, it, it has the month like one, two, three, four, five, six, but the name column has like January, February, March, April. So what I've been able to do in MDX is like combine those so that it's using the value col column to make calculations and do lookups and things like that. But it's going to display the name column so that you're gonna see, that's why we see January, February, March. I'm just gonna show you. That's why we see April, May, instead of seeing one or four, five. So I also did this date hierarchy and this is like super easy to do. And that's what I've been pulling in my Excel as well. So that's where I created that hierarchy to do year, quarter, month, day. And I created this year to date in here too. So this is an MDX expression. Um, and MDX just makes it a little bit more elegant for you to create complex expressions like that. So the rest of this, um, there's a lot of advanced features you can use here. Like you could even do, this is translation. It actually means translate to a different language. So you could do like Japan, Japanese or Chinese. Or, we're gonna stick with English. I know that one the best. And we are gonna just keep going through here. We're not gonna get into the advanced features. Here is where you would, um, you know, you could add different uh, permissions for different people within your organization. We're just gonna keep it simple. 
so yes, yeah, so that was where we set up the MDX data set. I'm also going to show you just a little bit about the modeling. I want to show you what it's like when we hit the index. So you saw in the query history when we hit indexes um, and it, you could see that we were hitting the cube. We also have this nice feature to show you that um, so that you can keep improving your, um, your data structure. So you can tell that for this index, I hit it 70 times. So whatever your organization is querying, they really like querying that specific set of data. So that enables you to kind of like be able to make sure that you're efficiently um, optimizing your data. So this one I only hit twice. So like maybe that was something that if I was running out of storage or something I could cut, but um, for now it's fine. So I just wanted to show you that it's really nice. And it's part of our AI optimizer as well. And yeah, we can go back into Excel and I can kind of wrap it up with you to show you um, just again, this is the pivot table that we created using Snowflake data. And we can create that using both Snowflake data from Snowflake, as well as building a cube with that Snowflake data and operating from Kyligens. So we have two options for you um, in order to do that. And yeah, we can offer you to go a lot faster if you build that cube. Um, but at the same time, we can um, also just give you the ability to connect directly into Snowflake. And again, like, it doesn't have to be Snowflake. It could be anything. You could use Azure Blob Storage. Um, you could use a multi-cloud, like a couple different clouds. Um, so it's really up to you. Feel free to send me an email um, or reach out to me if you have any questions or you'd like to try this at home. I'm happy to help you and work with you. Thank you so much.